Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson, Assistant Professor of Medicine at the University of Western Ontario. And this is Jen Seelish. Jen's a second year medical student. And today we're going to demonstrate the examination of the shoulder. We're going to start the examination by examining Jen's left shoulder. Now the shoulder examination is best done in the standing position. It's important to expose the shoulder when you're doing the exam, and it's best to expose both shoulders. Now for a man, you'll just ask them to take their shirt off. And for a woman, you can also ask them to take their shirt off, but it's appropriate to leave their bra on. For the purpose of this video, Jen's worn a sport top. Now, when we talk about the shoulder, we're talking about multiple joints, and we call the shoulder complex. And the shoulder complex consists of three joints and one articulation. We have the sternoclavicular joint, the acromioclavicular joint, the glenohumeral joint, and then the scapulothoracic articulation. Again, with any joint exam, we look at it, we feel it, and then we move it. So we're going to start now by looking at the shoulder. We're going to start the shoulder examination by pointing out some of the common structures around the shoulder complex. Again, we'll start by looking at the shoulder. So we'll start immediately looking at the sternum and the sternoclavicular articulation. Moving laterally along the clavicle, we'll get to the acromioclavicular articulation. Anteriorly here, we see the joint line of the glenohumeral joint. Now we'll just turn Jen sideways a little bit, and we can see the acromion, which is part of the scapula. And just below that, we see the humerus. Turning Jen just a little bit further around, now we can see the spine of the scapula running back along. And around this area we see some very important muscles, the rotator cuff muscles. Here we've got the supraspinatus muscle, the infraspinatus muscle, and teres minor. We also see the trapezius muscle overlying. We'll bring Jen back around to this position. Now you're looking at the shoulder, we'll start with the skin. And the first thing you want to look for is scars. The commonest scar we see is anterior right along the joint line here, usually due to a rotator cuff repair. Look at swelling in the glenohumeral joint itself it is often difficult because the glenohumeral joint is deep and you often don't see swelling even though it may be swollen. That being said, if you're going to be swelling, it will swell anteriorly. So you want to make sure we compare both sides. Other common places to see swelling include the sternoclavicular joint and the acromioclavicular joint. Again, redness will be the same thing as swelling. You often won't see redness over the glenohumeral joint. Again, look over the sternoclavicular joint and the acromioclavicular joint for any redness. We look at muscle bulk around the shoulder. One of the commonest muscle atrophies we see is the deltoid muscle. And when the deltoid muscle atrophies, we get squaring off of the shoulder. So the nice normal rounded contour of the shoulder that Jen has here becomes square as the deltoid atrophies and we see the bone of the acromion and then as it drops off into the humerus. We turn Jen around and look at the posterior. Muscular atrophy can also be seen in supraspinatus, which is just above the spine of the scapula, the infraspinatus and teres minor. And this will often happen with rotator cuff pathology. As far as with the alignment of the shoulder, you often don't see any malalignment looking at the shoulder. The dominant shoulder tends to be held a little bit lower than the non-dominant shoulder. The only other major malalignment we can get, and we can turn Jen around, is winging of the scapula. So we want to look posteriorly at both of these scapula. And sometimes we can see the scapula wing out, and we'll show that in a little bit more detail later on. Now that we've looked at the shoulder, we're going to go on to feeling the shoulder. Just like we did with inspection or looking at the shoulder, we're going to have an organized approach. We're going to start medially, moving laterally, and then posteriorly. Starting medially, we're going to palpate over the sternum. Then we're going to palpate the sternoclavicular joint for tenderness. We're going to move laterally over the bony clavicle, the convex medial two-thirds, and then the concave lateral one-third. Right in the middle of the lateral concavity of the lateral one-third, if you drop your thumb down, you're going to feel the coracoid process. And that's where the short head of the biceps uh, attaches. This is often a little bit tender. 
Now just lateral to that, we're going to find the joint line for the glenohumeral joint. You can palpate along there for tenderness. Moving back up now to the end of the clavicle, we're going to palpate the acromioclavicular joint. And then moving laterally over the bony acromion. Now underneath the bony acromion lies the subacromial bursa. And the best way to palpate this is to extend the arm. It'll bring the bursa out anteriorly, and we can palpate anteriorly, feeling the subacromial bursa. We can also feel laterally uh, for tenderness in the subacromial bursa or subdeltoid bursa here. Now, if we put our thumb in the midpoint of the acromion and we externally rotate Jen's arm, we're going to fall right into the bicipital groove, and we can feel the bicipital tendon. Now that bicipital tendon should normally be a little bit tender in most people. And again, it's important to compare to the other side. We'll bring our arm back around. We'll continue our palpation laterally down onto the humerus. And then we'll have Jen just turn around here. And we'll continue along now along the spine of the scapula. Noting for any bony tenderness and pain. And then feeling the medial scapular border. Again, noting for any bony tenderness and pain. At this point in time, we can now see the, the muscles of the rotator cuff, and we can palpate the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and then down onto the teres minor. We can also palpate up onto the trapezius and the paraspinal muscles up here into the neck. Now I'm going to bring Jen back around. There's one other spot I don't want you to miss when you're palpating for the shoulder, and that's up in the axilla. It's very important you don't miss any axillary pathology, so we're just going to Palpate up into Jen's axilla, feeling the medial border of the axilla and the lateral portion down into the humeral head. We're also going to feel behind the pectoralis muscle for lymph nodes and then posteriorly again for lymph nodes.